This is Scott the Fix a Guide. Today we're dealing with a Bosch dishwasher that won't heat up. But the first thing to check is to make sure the water level is getting high enough. So when you open the door and you look down, the water should come up to, once it's done filling, should come up to the level of the filter handle. So this that gray round filter handle should be at least that high. Right up in that area would mean that you have enough water for the heater to kick in. If it's not enough water, then it won't heat up. So this one has the right amount of water, but it's not heating up. So we're going to unplug it, or we can turn off the breaker so we don't have any power. We're gonna remove the perimeter screws here near the top so we can take off the control panel. So when I do this, I typically remove all of these Torx 15 screws except for the two at the very bottom. And this allows me to wiggle off the top part, the control panel, because I need to get in there and remove the controller and then re-solder one of the little joints for the heater relay. So Bosch is very common, has this problem at about the eight or 10 year mark where the um, soldering joint for the heater relay just gets so hot that it melts and no longer sends power to the heater and the water won't heat up, the cycle goes on forever, and it won't dry the dishes, and the dishwasher really just doesn't work. It gets uh, kind of soapy scum all over the place, and so you really need the heat. And this is a very simple solution. Once you get to the controller, it only takes you about a second to solder the connection again. And then when you put it back together, all of a sudden you've got heat. So it's really a kind of a fun repair. So we're just trying to get to the controller and we're doing that again by removing all of these perimeter screws. And then we can wiggle off the top part here where the controller lives. So here's the controller off to the right. I'm gonna get this thing off and we're gonna remove the modular wiring connectors. First on the left side is the one for the uh, power button. So we're gonna Remove that one by pressing it on the tabs and then wiggling it off. And then there is uh, the connectors on the controller. We're going to get those all off. It's a good idea to actually take a picture of that before you remove them. And then there's a little ground connector and there's the one for the door. So here I'm just taking a picture of where those wires go. It's pretty much impossible to get them on wrong, but it's just smart to, whenever you remove wires on a controller, to take a picture first. So we're gonna get these off by pushing back on a plastic tab and wiggling them out away from the controller. Sometimes you can use a little standard head screwdriver to push the tab to make it easier because I have big fingers, it's hard to get in there and, and get it, get the little thing pushed. So once we get all these wires off, then what we want to do is separate this plastic cover from the metal frame that holds the controller. There's two four, Torx 15 screws on the front that hold on the plastic frame. And there's some plastic clips on the back that we have to release. So we're going to flip it over. There's one here on the right side, one on the left side, and one in the middle. I usually just use a little standard head screwdriver to pry those off. So we separated those, and then on the controller, there are three little tabs we have to push in with the standard head screwdriver to get it to release. So you can see in the video here, these are just kind of small tabs. You push in with the screwdriver and then you're gonna push the controller out away from you, pushing that down out away from the middle frame. And the left side of it, the side toward the middle, will release and then you can slide the controller to your left and it'll come out of the case. There we go. And then we're gonna use a standard head screwdriver to gently pry the case apart. There's two tabs on the side that we release and then we just kind of pry it apart. 
and now we can see that there is a kind of burnt looking part here where the, the um, solder has melted and that's the one we want to repair. I'm going to scratch the area right around that. I, I got to be careful not to go too far away from that point, but right where you see where it's kind of burnt, just scratch in there to expose the metal on the circuit board because you want to connect the wire of the relay to that little metal. Just going to scratch away a tiny bit of the green just around that one burnt connection. I've already got my soldering pencil warming up, so I want to get that have that nice and hot for this repair. So now I've got that in position and I just got my soldering pin pushed up against that weak connector that was burnt. I'm going to heat it up and then I'll give it just a little bit of solder. Be careful the solder doesn't run uh, too far away here and, and connect more than you want. You want it to only be in that one spot that looks burnt. Just a little bit of solder. The trick is to really heat up the wire on the relay with your soldering pencil and then add just a little bit of solder. There we go. We're done. And now we're going to just close up the case and it'll just snap back together. <clears throat> and then we're going to basically do everything in reverse. This little fellow had a fun time watching. He's very curious about how machines work. So we're going to push the controller back into the metal case and it'll just click in. Pretty cool, pretty simple. Slide it in and then push in until you hear it click. There we go. Yes, sir. Those are. Now we're gonna hook the wires back up. You can look at the photograph that you took to compare, make sure it's correct, or just kind of see how the wires are hanging there. Usually, they're they're uh, right next to each other the way they go back in. Make sure they're seated all the way in. So you'll feel or hear a little bit of a click meaning that they've seated all the way as far as they can go. We also have to hook up the uh, door wire again, and also the ground green ground wire, and also the blue modular connector for the power button. And then we're gonna put the um, gray plastic piece back onto the metal frame. That's the part that has all the buttons. I'm just taking a couple more screws off here at the bottom and then I'm going to pull off the panel uh, just because doing reassembly it makes it a little bit easier to get that, that panel off. Don't have to do that. You can, you can still put it all back together without removing the panel. It just makes it a little bit easier. So now I'll join the plastic cover back to the metal frame. First I attach it at the top and I push it down until it clicks. Then I'll add those two Torx 15 screws onto the front. Get all my connectors back on. Put it back into position. Wiggle it back on. And then I'll put those screws in that hold it. Remember when you put on the uh, top controller here, there's those perimeter screws that, the, that go around the top. There's also two that come in from the sides, 
from the right and left sides. Make sure you put those back on too. It's a really gratifying repair because when you turned it on after about 10 minutes, you opened it up and you got a whole bunch of steam again and the dishwasher is going to do great. These dishwashers, when they're working, do really well. They're very quiet and they do a great job washing the dishes. We usually use uh, Cascade Complete tablets. Seem to do a really good job for Bosch and Mila. So we're gonna put the front panel back on. We gotta slide it up. Just take your time here. This can be a little tricky. Slide it up underneath the console. And then once you think you got that, then push in the bottom part of that panel and then you put in a couple of those screws at the bottom to hold it. We'll zip in all those Torx 15 screws. I like to have the door open, kind of laying against my leg to help support it while I put the screws in. With this dishwasher, we did run some white vinegar through it because <clears throat> it hadn't been heating for a while and it smelled pretty bad in there because the detergent wasn't really working. So we got the power back on and I'm gonna press a drain cycle first just to kind of reset the computer. That's pressing those two buttons at the same time for about three seconds. It'll say zero, it'll drain out all the water and then during the test, it heated up the water great. So thanks so much for watching and please subscribe when you get a chance.